The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents George Tobias in Schoolhouse at the Front. Before our show begins, here's a piece of interesting news behind the headlines. Recently, a loaded glider was towed across the Atlantic Ocean for the first time. The tow cable was a hundred-yard length of rope made of nylon. Nylon, tough and resilient, can stand the strain of raising a heavily laden transport into the air and towing it thousands of miles across the ocean. Tonight, with George Tobias as our star, we offer a new radio play, Schoolhouse at the Front, written for Cavalcade by Frank Gabrielson. Later in the program, we will introduce a special guest... Lieutenant Colonel Morton A. Seidenfeld of the Army's Special Training Branch. And now DuPont presents George Tobias as George Annis in Schoolhouse at the Front. My name is Corporal Alfred James Deming. In civilian life, I was principal of a grammar school in Pennsylvania. Now I'm in the Army, and I'm still teaching school. And I'm still teaching the alphabet, the multiplication table, and where the equator is, the same as before. But there's one difference. I'm not teaching children anymore. I'm teaching soldiers. Soldiers found to be illiterate. You see, our modern Army is a complicated thing, and men can't be taught to fight until they can read and write. Here comes my class now. Ten men. When they arrived at camp... Eight of them couldn't read. Five of them couldn't sign their names, and one couldn't even, el- even tell time. Now they know... Well, perhaps the best way to tell you about my class is to tell you about George Annas. He's that big soldier marching second. Before he joined the army, Annas was a professional wrestler, self-described as Hercules the Greek. Your papa is always good, Mary. I was afraid of that blacksmith, though. He's awful looking. Ah, all he does is make face, no wrestle. That Sicilian blacksmith, no fight. Just make loud noise. <laughs> like that, like pig, like Mussolini. No, no, he's good, papa. Only you're better. <laughs> Your papa is always better, Mary. Oh, hello, Mr. Goldie. Hello, Mary. Hey, that was an okay match tonight, Herc. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Here's your dough. Give it to the kid. She counted for me. Huh. You're a card, Herc. Want a match in Bridgeport next week? No. God match next week. Yeah? With who? Hitler and uh, Mussolini and uh, Hero... Uh, Hero... 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 Papa. <laughs> Hero... Hero... Hito. I go in the army. Swell, Herc. Swell. You should order make some soldier. Best soldier in army I make. When do you go? Tomorrow. Next day, war gonna be over. Huh. There's $45 here, all right, Papa. Well, come on, Mary. We get plenty banana splits for that. What's the matter, Mary? You don't like your ice cream? It's swell, Papa. Maybe you want some more, huh? No, no, thanks. Only I don't want to go to Aunt Anastasia's to live. Well, what do you want? I take you to army? <laughs> what kind of army this country going to have? All soldiers bring the little kids. Nobody fight, just eat banana splits. Going to lose the war. Can I have your handkerchief, Papa? No. I need handkerchief myself. You sleeps. Aunt Anastasia's nice. <laughs> sure she's nice. She's my sister. <laughs> Two banana splits. Here's your check. How much did this say, Mary? Uh, it's 50 cents, mister. Uh, nobody asked you. How much, Mary? It's 50 cents, Papa. When well, I want you to tell me how much the check, I ask you. Here, take money. It takes two quarters to make 50 cents, mister. That's right, Papa. Okay, okay. Take two quarters. Gee, thanks. Papa. Yeah? Will you send me your picture in uniform? You want it when I just plain soldier, or you want to wait till I get be officer? Are you going to be an officer, Papa? 
How many times I have to tell you, George Anas, Hercules the Greek, your papa is going to be best darn soldier in whole U.S. States Army. Upon his arrival at the induction center, George Anas, like all selectees, was given the general classification test, a test which determines to a large extent the type of advanced training the soldier is to receive. Please, what is this paper for? Read it and fill it out, soldier. Uh, please, I, I, I don't understand still this paper. Look, soldier, read it, write the answers. Uh, for instance, here it says, what is your name? George Anas. Well, don't tell me, write it in. Oh, the paper say I write my name? Sure, right there. <laughs> that paper nuts. I know can write. That paper's nuts. Hello? It's me, Mary. Papa. Hello, Papa. You calling from Kane? Yeah. Listen, Mary. I told you I'm going to be best soldier in army. Uh, they're going to give me special training. I'm functional illiterate. Adams? Yeah? Anas? That's me, George Anas. Uh, just answer here, please. Uh, Bar Beauty? I'm a here, Corp. Fu? Private James Wong Fu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay attention, please. I pay, I pay. I think only you mean some other James Wong fool. I see. Uh, Leeson? Yeah. Kimishevsky? Uh, Kimishevsky. Uh, just say here. Don't repeat your name, please. Uh, Kimishevsky. D I said not to repeat your name. Kimishevsky. Uh, what's the matter, Kimishevsky? Don't you understand English? Kimishevsky. You speak Polish? Polish? Ah, Polish, Polish, Polish. Tak, tak, ja jestem z Polski. Rodzono wad warszyja. Czy biwim do tego kraju pięć lat temu? Mieszkam na farmie. A teraz pójdę bić tych nazi psów. Does anyone else here speak Polish? Aj, aj, papow. Uh, can you explain to this man in Polish that there's been a mistake? He should be next door with Corporal Teko, who teaches the foreign language group. Kimiszewski got to go next place, huh? Yes, that's right. And tell him to hand this note to Corporal Teko. Corporal Teko, synch. <coughs> Kapral mówi, ty jesteś w niej zwojej klasie. Mas bitch be pressy like vem pokoyu. Proche buch tak dovri if te fili zamel do i shadow caprala teka. Ta klasa yis de la tich so move yam po angelsko. Yan kuri chi bardzo pchija chelu. Proche chi povis capralova, ye ya yavajine ni movi po nyensku. Ya puti de capralo teka y bende si hint ni uchu po nyesku. Kimishivski want I say you he is sorry he speak not the English. He say he worked very hard to learn. Fine. Good luck, Kimishevsky. Kimishevsky. Uh, now then, Papa's here. Uh, Ruga? Here. Smith? Here. Tolliver? Here. And Zizbik? Here. That's 11. Uh, 10 without uh, Kimishevsky. Uh, my name, by the way, is Deming. Corporal Alfred Deming. Now, before we begin our work, I want to make sure that we all know exactly why we're here. Would any one of you men tell me? I tell you, sure. Uh, you're Anas? That's right, George Anas. All right, why are we here, Anas? I know. Sergeant, tell me. We are functional illiterates. And do you know what that means? Sure. It means army like us so much, they want to give us special training. Yes, that's right. This is a special training unit. Do you know what kind of training you're going to get here? Uh, uh, excuse me, that's a crazy question. Why? Well, there's only one thing anybody needs to show soldiers. How to fight. How to fight with fist, the knife, the gun, the tank, the airplane. That's all soldiers need to know. A soldier has to know more than that on us. What's more? Before a man can be part of this army, he's got to have the equivalent of a fourth-grade grammar school education. That means that he has to know how to read and write simple English and how to do some arithmetic. For instance, if a man can't write his name, he can't sign for his pay. I make it cross. A cross can be anybody, Papa. But if you write your name like this, A-N-D-R-E-W-P-O-P-P-O-V. See how easy it is to write it? Is that Andrew, Papa? Yep. He spelled me. He spelled me. And you can do it, Papa, easily. And when you write your name like that, you're not just a little mark. You're Andrew Popov, and everybody knows it. Boy, that be darn fine-looking name. All right, let's get to work, shall we? Now, here on this chart is what we call the alphabet. It's made up of 26 letters, 
All these things are letters. And all words are made up of some combination of these letters. Now, this first letter is A. You say it after me, please? A. A. Hey, please, a minute. I, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, what is it, Anas? This leather business is sound like go to school. It is a school. A school is for kids. School's also for anybody that has to learn. Well, it's for kids. I know. I got daughter in school. Little like that she is. She learns the same thing you want to show me. To read, to write, to count, to wash the back of the neck. I suppose you show us that too, huh? You bet we do, soldier. Uh, I'm big, tall man. I can't go to school. What my friends say? You kill Germans, Herc? I shake my head. You kill Japs, Herc? I shake my head. You kill Italians, jerk? I shake my head. What do you do in war, Herc? I learned the letter A. Get this in your head, soldier. The army won't let you fight until you can read and write and figure. Uh, it's going to be a long time then before George Anna's fight. We'll see, soldier. This is a lousy way to treat first-class functional illiterate. Let's get on with the lesson. What letter am I pointing at, man? A. This is B. Say it. B. C. C. At the end of a few weeks, most of my class was making progress. They could read simple things. They could do easy sums. Well, that was eight of them. The other two had learned nothing. One of these was Ruga, who tried hard, but whose mind was poor. The other was Annas, whose mind was good, but it just wouldn't work. I just about decided to report him as hopelessly maladjusted and unfit for service. When one day in class, as we were reading aloud from the soldier's reader... I live in camp. I am in the army. I have an army number. What is your army number, Tulliver? Four million four hundred and forty-six thousand and four. Anas? Yes, Corporal? How many times do I have to tell you to stop looking out of the window? There's a plane way up there, and I'm watching Never it. mind that. You pay attention here, please. I pay all the attention I got, Corporal. Yeah? Then why don't you learn something? Maybe I'm dumb. No, you're not dumb. Your sergeant tells me that you have the makings of a good soldier, Annas. Soldier? Sure. But that got nothing to do with school. Any man who can learn the manual of arms can learn to sign his name if he wants to. Everybody else in this class can do it now. Not Ruga. Never mind Ruga. Don't you feel funny still making those crosses? I don't feel half so funny as feel like going to school like little kids. We won't go into that again, Annas. But from now on, you work or you'll find yourself in trouble. All right, let's get on with the reading, please. May I ask it first question, please? Uh, what is it, Papa? I find it two words in letter. I cannot understand it. Uh, you want to show me the letter? Sure, it's right here. These two words, see? Banana split. Your daughter says she's thanking you for the money you sent her for a banana split, Papa. Banana split? What that mean, teacher? Class? Ice cream on banana. Ice cream on banana. Right. Uh, now, uh, how come that you send your girl money for it when you don't know what it was, uh, Papa? Oh, not my kid. This is not my letter. Well, whose is it, then? The Greeks. Well, what are you doing with it? Well, he's a poor, ignorant fellow, so I read it his mail to him. Why do you do that? Poor, dumb Greek cannot read. He can say, I want to have kid is home. I read letter because I feel sorry. You read letter because I pay you two packs of cigarettes. Uh, Papa, let me get this straight. You read Anna's mail to him because he gives you cigarettes? I'm sorry for him, too. Papa, I hate to see a man lose a good thing. But after this, you let Anna's read his own mail. If Anna's wants to know what a letter says, let him learn to read it the way the rest of us have. You are listening to George Tobias as George Annis in Schoolhouse at the Front, a new radio play on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. As our play continues, George Annis, a Greek wrestler played by Mr. Tobias, is getting into difficulties because he refuses to apply himself in the Army's training course for men who cannot read or write English. Mail call. Mail's in. Kenzie. Yeah. Babcock. Chester. Hey, you got leather for on us? Keep your shirt on, buddy. Tolliver. Tolliver, here. Here, uh, Wilson. Wilson, give me. Not got for on us? 
My kid, my kid, no right and weak now. There's one for you, you'll get it, buddy. Uh-huh. Epstein, yeah. Jones, uh-huh. Charlie, yeah. Brown, yeah. Annas. Me, that's me, George Annas. That's me. A little later that day, as I got the story, Popov and Smith and some of the men were sitting around quarters shooting the breeze. You hear Corporal tell me today I do good schoolwork? Uh, quite a little teacher's pet, ain't you, Papa? Who is teacher pet? Uh, you butted a corporal like he was a waffle. Yeah? Who else work as hard as me, huh? Who else knows already the general orders? Listen, my general orders are, one, to take uh, charge of this post and all government property in view. Two, to okay, walk my post in a military manner, keeping orders. always on the alert and observing everything that takes place within sight or hearing. Hey, I'm trying to read Three, this to report all violations of orders I'm instructed okay, to enforce. You know Four, to repeat all calls from posts more distant from the guardhouse than my own. Five, to quit my post only and properly and leave. Six, to receive, obey, and pass on to the sentinel who leads me all orders oh, from the commanding officer yeah. of the officers of the day and officers and non-commissioned officers of the guard only. Seven, to talk to no one except in line of duty. Eight, to give the alarm in case of fire or disorder. Nine, to call the corporal of the guard in any case not covered by instructions. Ten, to salute all officers and all colors. Stand a smart case. Shut up, Eleven, man. to be especially watchful oh, at night and during the time for challenging to challenge all persons on or near my post and to allow no one to pass without proper authority. And I suppose that is teacher's study. Hey, shut up. Here comes a Greek. Hey, Popov. What's the matter? Popov lose his voice? Yeah, about two minutes too late. What? What do you want? Got a letter from kid. Read for me, huh? No. What do you mean, no? I pay you two packs of cigarettes like all time. Cannot read letter. Promise, teacher. Never mind, teacher. I pay four pack cigarettes. No. I pay eight. I don't care. You pay 800. Why I not? not read letter. Why not? I'm not sorry for you no more. Look, I got to know what the kids say. Maybe she need money or something, huh? Who's going to read me letter? What's the matter, you guys? All afraid of teacher, huh? No, oh, it ain't that, brother Greek. We're just getting fed up working our butt ends off while, while you sit there and look out the window. And do your own reading. But I got to know what kids say. It's whole week since I don't hear. Ask the teacher. Teacher, I quit the army first. Log it, man. What I need teacher for. Go ahead, one of you guys, read letter. I ask, please, read letter. Well, as long as you say please, give it here. You read letter? No, no. Ah, oh, shut up, you. What she say, Smitty? Hey, hey, this is serious. Yeah, look, fellas. Yeah? What's the matter? Say? What's the matter? Is kid sick? Oh... I ain't got the heart to tell you, Herc. Tell, tell. You promised you read letter. Well, I just read it, didn't I? Read? Read to who? To myself. You didn't think I was going to read it out loud, did you? Ah! No, read it! What with the kid? I got to know. All oh, you got to do is read your own letter, Greg. <laughs> well, just soon I find out how his kid, I come and break your neck, Mr. Private Smitty. Please. You get the house of Dimitrios Constantino. Sorry, they do not answer. What you tell me? My sister home all time. Ring phone, she answer. Sorry, they do not answer. Oh, look, operator, you must make mistake. Ring phone. I got find out about my kid. I, I think she's sick. I got find out. Ring phone. Sorry, they do not answer. <laughs> Ring louder, then. I got find my kid. <laughs> Around five o'clock, I was working with Ruga, who came every day for extra lessons. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Yes, that's right. Two times five, uh, five uh, is ten. Uh Please, Corporal Corporal Deming, I got to see you. Uh, You'll have to wait on us. I'm busy right now. But look, it's a letter from my little kids. Something's wrong. I call home and no answer. I think maybe poor little kid in hospital. Uh, what is it you want me to do? <laughs> Read letter. Tell me what's wrong, please, huh? Sort of a sudden interest you're taking in reading, isn't it, Annas? Well, ain't you here for to teach me to read? My job isn't to teach you to read your letters from home, Annas. I'm supposed to give you enough education so you can become a fighting soldier, that's all. Ruga comes every day for an extra hour or two and works with me. Why do you do that, Ruga? I am not so smart. Work hard for me. Army say I got to learn or can fight. I have mother in Yugoslavia. I did have brother there, too. What do you think I think about Greece, about the U.S. states? I fight like anything for them. Well, you got to finish school first. I finish, you know. 
Only read leather, huh? No, Anas. I put up with enough from you. But my kid... Learn to read, then. Corporal, I think now Anas work hard. Maybe you let Ruga read letter to him, yes? You think you can, Ruga? I try. George, you feel bad. Ought to know about little girl. All right. Give Ruga your letter. What it say? Hmm? Dear Papa, I have a ship, a ship, a ship price for you. <laughs> By the time you get this letter, Aunt Anastasia... Anastasia. And I will be in your camp. I am so excited that I cannot write no more. I will tell you every thing when I see you. You loving daughter Mary Annas. <laughs> the kid, the kids will come to see me, huh? There is a, a P.S. Well, read him, read him. And Anastasia say, please do send me, do not send me any more quarters. Quarters. I am eating too many... What is this word, please? <laughs> That's banana split. What's the matter? You can't read. Now, Annas can read a lot more than banana splits. And so can the whole class, even Ruga. They'll be graduating soon, and they'll make good soldiers. Here they come now, marching the class. You hear them? That's more than ten men. That's all the special training units in all the camps. Thousands and thousands of men from the 48 states. Men from over the seas. Men who did not have enough education to serve their country under arms. They'll be better soldiers now and better citizens later on. Here they come, on their way to school 20 years late, but on their way to school at last, to the schoolhouse at the front. Thank you, George Tobias. In a few moments, Mr. Tobias will introduce Cavalcade's special guest of the evening, Lieutenant Colonel Morton A. Seidenfeld of the Army Special Training Service. Before he does, we want to tell you the story of the capture of sunshine by chemistry and how this development is helping to produce 60 billion eggs this year. Have you wondered what the food situation might be if there were not plenty of poultry and eggs? There are at least half a billion chickens in the United States at the present time the greatest number ever. And they are expected to lay nearly 60 billion eggs this year. Poultry products have become a $2 billion business in wartime America. But the poultry man, raising more hens, producing more eggs than ever before, is facing problems he has never faced before. He is hampered by serious shortages of vital ingredients which he must have in the feed he gives his flock. That he is doing as well as he is is due to his own extraordinary wartime efforts and the persevering effort made by the feed manufacturers to supply him, in spite of war shortages, with a complete ration. One shortage that has not developed, a shortage that might have been more serious than any other faced by the poultry man, has been prevented by chemistry. Chickens, just like human beings, must have certain vitamins, especially vitamin D. A chick needs vitamin D to grow sturdy and strong. A laying hen needs it for health and egg production. And every poultry breeder knows that vitamin D assures him more eggs will hatch. Luckily for America's food supply, vitamin D is one shortage the poultry man doesn't have to worry about today. For DuPont now manufactures vitamin D for poultry in quantities that meet all of the needs of America's greatly expanded wartime poultry industry. Sunshine captured by chemistry. That's what it amounts to, in matter-of-fact scientific terms, for vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. And using domestic raw materials of which the supply is secure, ultraviolet rays identical with those in sunshine are what DuPont pours into them, using great banks of powerful ultraviolet lamps in place of the rays of the sun. Hens and chicks must have vitamin D the year round. And not only today when there is plenty of summer sunshine, but next winter as well when skies will be overcast, this stored up chemical sunshine will help to see to it that you have plenty of chickens and eggs. Poultrymen are doing all they can. 
So are feed manufacturers. Their record is amazing, 60 billion eggs this year. And we at DuPont are happy in the knowledge that their task is made easier by Delsterol Deactivated Animal Sterol, one of the DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And now, the star of tonight's cavalcade, George Tobias. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As I'm sure all of you recognize, beneath the comedy of tonight's cavalcade is a serious condition that demands correcting. For its part, the Army is doing what it can. In Washington now is a gentleman who will tell you what is being done. It is my privilege to present Lieutenant Colonel Morton A. Seidenfeld of the Army Special Training Branch. Colonel Seidenfeld. The story we have been listening to tonight carries with it inspiration and hope for many other Americans who, like George Onnes, have not had an opportunity to learn the fundamentals of our language. It is a serious reflection upon our national culture that two of our Axis enemies, Japan and Germany, can boast a higher degree of literacy than the United States. Education is the foundation of democracy. We must never lag in strengthening that foundation. Among potential soldiers, illiteracy is a serious handicap and a hazard to successful military operations. The Army is doing what it can to salvage the ability of some of the men who cannot read or write English, but who are otherwise eligible for induction into the Army. Our public schools are also cooperating to help illiterates prepare for regular assignment when they are called to the colors. The Army welcomes any other assistance it can receive to help develop capable soldiers from the large group of Americans, similar to Anas and Popoff, who eagerly desire to serve our country. Beneath the surface of tonight's amusing story, there is a real tragedy. How unfortunate it is that there are still many Americans so unlettered that they not only fail to realize their handicap, but instead they actually boast that they are functional illiterates. Through proper education, these men might readily take pride in their increased ability to serve our country at war, and in this new learning will permit them to enjoy the greater opportunities in our land when the peace for which they fight returns. <laughs> To most people, a diamond is a jewel. To some, it is an instrument of war. Next week, Cavalcade presents an action-packed Nazi spy melodrama about the men who risk death for diamonds for industry. Our play, Diamonds at War. Our star, the popular screen player, Charles Coburn. Be sure to hear Cavalcade next week when we present Diamonds at War, starring Charles Coburn, the famous Mr. Dingle of the motion picture The More the Merrier. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Donald Voorhees. Cavalcade is pleased to announce that tonight's star, George Tobias, is soon to be seen in the Warner Brothers feature picture Irving Berlin's This is the Army, which will be presented nationally for the benefit of the Army Emergency Relief Fund. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.